Welcome back, my amazing learners. As you can see, we are looking at the Ministry of Education in Jamaica, the diagnostic test that you did in September 2020. Now, I know that we discussed this before, but based on what I'm seeing, it a lot of this bears repeating. So I've done it in video format to help you. Now, even though it says grade three diagnostic test, you will note right here that it also says that it is based on content that would have been taught in grade two. Okay, so these questions, as I go through them, these are things that you should have learned before to build your foundational knowledge. And hopefully your parents will spend some time during the summer holiday helping you to revise and to practice. And if not, to learn the actual foundation concepts and skills that you need. So let's look at question one. Question one, say the name of the item in the picture below, which letter gives the beginning sound of the word. So we see a picture of a carrot, C-A-R-R-O-T, carrot. So right away, you know it's not a T sound, a T sound. It's not a R sound, it's a C sound, a hard C sound. So the answer is B. Question two, read the word below. Which vowel sound is made by the underlined letters in the word? So we have bread, B-R-E-A-D, bread. So in the middle of that word, we have E and A. Those are the vowels. Is it the long vowel sound, A-E-I-O-U? When the vowel calls its name, A-E-I-O-U? No, it's a short sound. All right, so we call this E-A right there, bread. You don't hear the vowel calling its name in the word bread. So it has to be the short sound. And E before A right there, the answer is A, short E. Then we have question three to put those words in alphabetical order. Many, sleep, fast. Many begins with M, sleep begins with S, fast begins with F. So you look at the first letter of each word, put it in order, alphabetical order, A, B, C. Okay, so you look, F comes before M, both of them come before S in the alphabet. So the answer has to be C. Let me see if I can pick this up a little bit faster. If you need me to slow down, if you need to pause, that's the beauty of the video format. Question four, which word has a silent letter? Again, the easiest way to do this is to call the word aloud or call it in your head. Bulb, hand, lamb, lamb, lamp. There's no lamb is lamb. So that has to be the answer because you don't hear the sound of the B. It's silent. Question five, which blend best completes the two words below? All right, so we have N-T. Can we have N-T-O-O-N? That's not a word. W-A-N-T, want. Yes, that is a word. But remember that the question wants it to fit both, both of them. Then we have F-L, F-L-O-O-N, floon, floon, is that a word? Let's look at W-A-F-L, hmm, can't be that. So it has to be S-P, so you would have S-P-O-O-N, spoon, W-A-S-P, wasp. So it fits both, both words. All right, so that is why that is the answer. Then for question six, look at the pictures and words. Which word has a G sound that is different from the other two? So again, the easiest thing to do is for you to call it out, children, sound it out. Fingers, page, girl. Listen to how the, the letter G sounds in those words, okay? And you will see that it will sound different in the word page. Let's look at question seven. What is the correct spelling of the object sound, um, shown below? So right there you see a ruler and you know the correct spelling of the word ruler is R-U-L-E-R, -E ruler. Then you should read the poem, the goat and the soap. And look at the underlined word, C-O-T-E, coat. Is that the correct spelling of coat? No, it isn't. Coat is spelled C-O-A-T, coat. 
Question nine, read the sentence below. There is a word with two letters missing. Which two letters best completes the word in the sentence? And they have given you a hint. You see the pencil right there? And then you read the sentence now. The point of the pencil is too sharp. If you are not sure, you can always try out each, each answer. So answer A, option A is O-R. So you fit it in and you say S-H-O-R-P, sharp, no. Then you look at B, A-R. You bring it up, S-H-A-R-P, sharp, correct. You can even continue and try it with the E-R. But that is how you try and test the different options when you are not certain. Question 10, which word is similar in meaning to the underlined word in the sentence below? We discovered the book after searching for days. Discovered. Which word there is close in meaning to discovered? Okay? So you can break down the word. Think about the root word. Cover. Discovered with the prefix and all of that, or you can just remember the vocabulary that you have been learning for how long now. And remember that another word for discovered is found. We found the book after searching for days. Question 11, which word best completes the sentence below? I just want to sit blank and rest. So we have H-E-I-R, I wonder if you can see it on camera. My hair is here. H A I R is here. These are the strands that are growing out of your out of your scalp. And then H E A R, the verb to hear. All right, to hear or to listen. So the answer H E R E is talking about position. I am here and there. That's why the answer is A here. H E R E. Let's go to question 12. Meaning of the compound word, homemade. Home made. Homemade. Something made at home. Which word is opposite in meaning to the underlined word in the sentence below? So the underlined word is difficult. And the sentence says, the room was noisy. So it was difficult for me to hear what he said. Difficult. Opposite. Difficult, easy, opposites in meaning, okay? And then there are context clues in the, in the sentence there, noisy, hear what he said, okay? Let's look at question 14, which sentence is correct? We are ready to go. We am ready to go. We is ready to go. Again, students, sometimes you need to read it, hear it, and you will pick up the answer. If you can't figure it out, that is one of the quickest ways for you to do that, okay? So if you studied and some of these questions are still hard for you, it might be best if you read it to yourself and figure out the answer that way. Then we have question 15, which two words correctly complete the sentence below? His pencil broke while he blank. He were right. He was writing. He was right. It has to be B, was writing, because we have a singular, a singular noun there, he. All right, that pronoun, he was writing. Present continuous, writing. Question 16, which pronoun can appropriately replace the underlined word in the sentence below? John. So we're going to replace the proper noun, John, with the pronoun he. Again, you can sound it out, call it out. Him loves to go swimming. His loves to go swimming. He loves to go swimming. And that will just activate that part of your, um, your memory in your brain and help you to remember the correct answer. Question 17, the picture below shows a book. Which word represents more than one book? So here is where your singular and plural comes in. So one book, two books. So you just add an S. Now, some words you don't add a S, you have to change the ending, that, that last letter of the word. So question 18, the picture below shows a leaf, which word represents more than one leaf? Leaves, take off the F and add V-E-S. How about baby? One baby, 
two babies, B-A-B-I-E-S. And there are many other words like that. Now let's look at this one, asking you for the past tense. You know that to get the past tense, you add E-D. But there are some words where you have to change the word, okay? Some are irregular, but the regular words, most of them, you just add E-D. So the answer for that one is played. Then number 20, which word in that sentence is a proper noun? Jamaica is a beautiful country. Jamaica, that's the proper noun. Then 21, which word best replaces the underlined words in the sentence below? Kayla and I are best friends. We are best friends. They are best friends. You are best friends. They are so close together, children. But the one that best replaces it is we. Okay? Now, you can always dispute that with your parents or your older um, brothers and sisters and all of that. But that is what the government is saying, that we, we are best friends. That's the one that best best replaces the underlined words let's look at 22 which word best completes the sentence below the boys is eating lunch the boy is eating lunch the children is eating lunch now if you remember your subject verb agreement single and plural if you put the boy is eating lunch you're correct if you put the boys are eating lunch if the sentence was changed a little bit like that the boys are eating lunch or the children are eating lunch, then it would be correct. 23, which punctuation mark should replace the asterisk in the comments below to make it correct? So you see the sentence there. The teacher asked Ben to take her books, markers and eraser to the office. So she's listing out these things, books, markers, erasers. So there's a list of different items. So the answer is a comma to separate the items. 24, which sentence is correct? All the football player, singular, so you know that's wrong. All the, the football player were, were excited? No, can't be that, can't be correct. Then the next sentence, all the football players was excited, incorrect. So the answer has to be C. Subject verb agreement again. Question 25, which word would be most appropriate to describe the tree? So a tree grows taller and taller. We are talking about height. So the word that would be most appropriate is tall. You want to say a happy tree in this context, children, because a tree is not like a person or an animal with facial expressions. And long is talking about the length. Let's move on. Question 26. So you have an answer here, Sally's answer, a sandwich, a fruit, and water. Which question was Sally most likely asked? What did you have for lunch today, Sally? That's the most likely question. Because if someone asked her, are you hungry? Then she would respond with, yes, I'm hungry, or no, I'm not hungry, something like that. Let's look at this sentence. The captain of the pirate ship in the story was called Henry Morgan. So here you are talking about subject, subject and object of the sentence. Now, an easy way to tell the subject is to think to yourself, to think to yourself, who is this story? Who, hear me about the story. What is the focus of the sentence? Who is the sentence talking about? All right, and that's an easy way to pick up the subject of the sentence. So the subject of this sentence is the captain. Number 28, which pronoun correctly completes the sentence below? My parents bought the cricket bat and ball as a Christmas present for Ben and Ben and me. In the olden days, a lot of Jamaicans would insist that the answer is Ben and I, but we have changed and now with Jamaican Standard English, all of us are native English speakers, but we are not adopting certain norms, old time norms from the Queen's English anymore. So the answer is Ben and me. Then we have a paragraph here. As you look at it, children, you will see that there is an I by itself and it's a common I. As you see that, you know that it is incorrect because I by itself, must be capital. 
All right. Then we have an error in the sentence, Blurry. Yes. My brother loved to play cricket. No, 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 no. My brother loves to play cricket. You have to study your subject verb agreement again there. Let's look at 31. Here we have a story web. Some teachers just call it a graphic organizers. Others will call it a story map. People have different names for it. But when you look at it, you will see that in the middle, you have title of the story. Then you have some words or ideas around it. Popcorn, pillow fight, friends, pajamas. Now those words will give you an idea of what it would be about. So it has to be the sleepover. It can't be the bully or it's unlikely to be the bully and it can't be a day at the beach because people don't really wear pajamas to the beach. Okay, so let's look at this letter here so that we can answer question 32. Looking at the question, we see the address, the date, the body of the letter and the closing and the name. But something is missing, it's the greeting. There is no dear auntie because at the end it says your niece, Jody. So she's writing to somebody, she could say, dear Auntie Carol, dear Auntie Shan, whatever it is, dear Auntie Birdie, but the greeting is missing and it's a very important part of the letter. Let's look at question 33. You look at the picture and then you, you try to figure out hmm, what the story would be based on. Okay, so we have a lady there sitting in a park with children all around her, okay? All right, so there are no cats in the picture, so it could not be C, can't be B because the B doesn't mention the people. So it has to be A, Thursdays are my favorite day. Mrs. Green would take the class outside. We would be allowed to read, take our pets or toys and just have fun. So the answer has to be A. Let's look at this bedtime story by Anita Amin. Where did the story take place? A castle is mentioned in the story, but the story really took place at Rosie's home. How do we know that? It talks about Rosie hopping out of bed, going into her dad's room, things like that. So the most likely place is her home, Rosie's home. Now the characters, how many characters? Four characters. And we know that characters are the people in the story or who the story is about. So if it is a story like, um, let me see, Puss in Boots, where we have a talking cat, Puss would be a character along with the king of the castle and the other people in the story. Let's look at 36. What's it, what is the main idea of the story? The main idea is that Rosie enjoyed having story time with her dad just before bed. Let's look at 37. What type of story did Rosie most likely tell dad? A fairy tale based on what she, she said in that story there. It was a fairy tale. Then we have some pictures here that we should put in order. What is the first thing that was likely to happen? I think it was picture three with the boy going outside, going down the stairs. And then picture two, you could see the two boys playing football outside. And then picture four, one of the boys kicked the football and it broke the window. And then lastly, picture one, you see the window is broken. Somebody angry is looking out, looking outside and the two boys like they're running away. So, so that is why that is the answer. And then what is the plot of the story? The word plot is the action. What happened in the story? So the answer is A, the boys were playing football. The ball broke the neighbor's window. They weren't playing hide and seek, according to the pictures that we just saw. And they weren't on a playing field. They were right outside the house. And the last question, what is likely to happen next? in the sequence of events. The boy, the boy would just get some pizza or the boys would get some pizza and everybody would be happy. No, 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 no. The boys would just continue playing. No big deal that the neighbor's window was broken. No, no, no. The most likely answer is B, the man complains to the boy's parents. Now that's it for now. I will see you in the next video. Hopefully you learned something new or something was reinforced. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. 
comment below so that I can continue to improve these videos for your benefit. Bye-bye.